Oh dear church, how uh, time flies. We are one year older. 2020 has gone by in the most unusual way. And 2021 is also very different, isn't it? Nothing that we have done as a church in the first uh, nine years as a parish has prepared us for this very unusual season. Last year, on the 15th of August, we celebrated our 10th anniversary through an online service as well. I shared a message based on the word ten, T-E-N. I encourage us to look with God to the future with three things. Firstly, T stands for transforming lives. We need to continue to grow as a Christian. Secondly, E stands for evangelizing lives. We want to continue to tell others about the goodness of God. And then thirdly, N stands for next lap together. We want to enter into a new decade together, not just a few of us, but all together. And the last point is something that I hope to elaborate on today as we celebrate our 11th anniversary. As I said with the Lord to hear what he was telling us, I was led to Joshua chapter 5. We are probably familiar with Joshua chapter 5 because of the story of the Lord's commander confronting Joshua. Joshua was in the promised land, but the promised land is also the enemy's land. And one day when Joshua was taking a walk, perhaps thinking through with the Lord what he needed to do, suddenly he saw someone standing right in front of him. And Joshua heard an unusual thing from this person whom he met. I will go into the passage later under point three. Now, as we enter into this next slide together, I want to emphasize on three things. First, new relationship. Second, new resources. And third, new rules of engagement. So let's take a look at the first thing, which is new relationship. Some very interesting thing happened in Joshua chapter 5, right from the start. Let's read verse 2 to 5 again to find out what happened. In verse 2, at that time, the Lord told Joshua, make flint knives and circumcise this second generation of Israelites. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the entire male population of Israel. I give Beth Haraloth. Joshua had to circumcise them because all the men who were old enough to fight in battle when they left Egypt had died in the wilderness. Those who left Egypt had all been circumcised, but none of those born after the Exodus during the years in the wilderness had been circumcised. You see, this may not seem strange at first, because we somehow know that the Israelites go through circumcision, isn't it? But with careful reading, we now remember that the Israelites are not going through circumcision in the comfort of their homes. Circumcision is a rather painful and uncomfortable process, and it can easily take two to three days to recover after the procedure. Right now, our nation is rolling out vaccination at different parts of the country. We can go to the place that is most convenient for us. And after that, we can return home to rest and recover in the safety of our homes. Now the Israelites at that point in time do not have a home to call their own. They were wandering in the wilderness for the last 40 years. Wherever the Lord led them by a pillar of cloud in the day and a pillar of fire at night, they will go. And now in the enemy's land, the Lord told Joshua to circumcise the generation that was born in the wilderness. This place is not the most comfortable place. And certainly it is not the safest place, in my own opinion. Now all the fighting fit Israelites had to go through circumcision, which would weaken them. They will be exposed to the attacks of the enemies, isn't it? Surely the Lord knows that already. 
Now, the question that we need to ask is, why did the Lord still commanded Joshua to circumcise the Israelites? Wouldn't you ask that question? Well, the answer is this. Relationship with the Lord is more important than the rest of the things in life. Everything in life rise and fall based on our relationship with God. So you need to hear this again. Relationship with the Lord is more important than the rest of the things in life. It is not a new thing that I'm saying here, but it is an important one that will shape how our decade will look like in St. Andrew City Church. You see, circumcision has got to do with the covenant relationship that God has established with Israel. So circumcision is not merely a a ritual, but the act of circumcision points to the relationship that the Israelites have with God. We all have started in our journey as a Christian by having a relationship with God. After 11 years as a parish, it is time to ask ourselves and ask God, how is our relationship with him? This is not a guilt trip that I'm trying to put you through. It is a sincere and honest question. And no matter what the answer is, it touches the heart of God because we speak honestly and sincerely to him. Yes, you have heard it correctly. No matter what the answer is, it touches the heart of God. God is not interested in you giving the right answer as if he is the examiner of a test. God, rather, is interested in you speaking truthfully and sincerely from your heart, and he wants to speak to you. Not to reprimand you, but to draw you back into a loving relationship with him, no matter where you are. And I'm asking this question myself too. I'm spending time with the PCC to look uh, through a book uh, in this season. And the book is called Strengthening the Soul of Your Leadership. We have agreed to spend the first one and a half hours at each PCC to hear from each other what the Lord is saying to us before we discuss ministry matters. I've shared in the last session about my relationship with the Lord. The Lord put into my heart this question as I was preparing for the session, I heard the Lord asking me this question. Edwin, are you going through the motion? Edwin, are you going through the motion? You know, having been a pastor for the last 20 years, I have acquired some skills and knowledge, and I can carry out my task as a pastor quite smoothly without paying attention to what it is happening in my heart. And you won't even notice it. And I won't even know I've crossed the line from having a living relationship with the Lord to having a dead relationship with the Lord until it is too late. And so I sense the Lord asking me this question, Edwin, are you going through the motion? I guess as we celebrate our 11th anniversary, before we embark on anything else, which we are tempted to, and we will have to eventually, let us have a new relationship with the Lord. Talk to the Lord. Lord, how is my relationship with you? The Lord loves to hear from you. Now, secondly, we want to look at new resources. Let's take a look at verse 10 to 12. While the Israelites were camped at Gilgal on the plains of Jericho, they celebrated Passover on the evening of the 14th day of the first month. The very next day, they began to eat unleavened bread and roasted grain harvested from the land. No manna appeared on the day they first ate from the crops of the land, and it was never seen again. From that time on, the Israelites ate from the crops of Canaan. 
The second interesting thing that happened to the Israelites as they crossed the Jordan River and now in the Promised Land is that they ate of the unleavened bread and roasted grain harvested from the land. Not something obvious at the first reading. But on closer reading, you will remember that they ate manna that appeared on the ground every morning for the last 40 years as they wandered in the wilderness. You can look it up in Exodus 16. So every morning when they wake up, manna appeared and they ate it. Now, they, now that they are in the promised land, uh, there was no more manna that appeared. But the Lord provided for them through a different means, through the produce of the land. We may not feel the change that they were experiencing immediately because we were not there. Now, just imagine with me for a while. For the last 40 years, when they woke up the next morning, manna appeared on the ground and they ate it. But now they ate from the produce of the land. The way of getting the food they need is now very different. All right. The way they are getting the food now is very different. Yet the truth remains the same. The truth is this, the Lord provided for them. All right. So this is a lesson that we need to learn. The way resources come to us moving forward can change, but it is still the Lord who is providing for us. We need to trust the Lord and not on the methods or the modes. Now, the problem with us is that we attach ourselves to the methods and the modes and not the maker and the methods of the modes. Something to think about, isn't it? For us as an individual, as a family, as a ministry, and as a church. Until you understand that the attachment we need to have is to the Father who loves us and provides for us and not the familiarity of things, we will not dare to take a step of faith to move forward. Let me repeat that again. Until you understand that the attachment we need to have is to the Father who loves us and provides for us and not the familiarity of things. We will not dare to take a step of faith to move forward. Let me come to the last and final point, which is new rules of engagement. Let's take a look at verse 13 to 14. When Joshua was near the town of Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a sword in hand. And Joshua went up to him and demanded, are you friend or foe? Neither one, he replied. I am the commander of the Lord's army. At this, Joshua fell with his face to the ground in reverence. I am at your command, Joshua said. What do you want your servant to do? The third interesting thing that happened was a man who suddenly appeared out of nowhere when Joshua was contemplating his next move with the Lord. I remembered when I was in the army in the field training where I was guarding the area at night, we were told that when we see someone walking around at night, we were to check the person if he was a friend or a foe. We would shout a cold word, and if the person was able to give an appropriate reply, then we knew that the person was a friend and not a foe. And so here, Joshua was doing the same thing. He asked the same thing of the person. Are you a friend or a foe? Now, that was normal for Joshua to do. But the answer that Joshua received was not normal. The person answered Joshua, neither one, he replied. I am the commander of the Lord's army. Now, you must really pause to think about the implication of such an answer. Joshua asked, are you a friend or a foe? The person said, neither one. 
I am the commander of the Lord's army. Now, this is rather a confusing answer, isn't it? So Joshua asked, are you a friend or a foe? And the person said, neither one. Was this supposed to be a trick answer to confuse Joshua? You see, a friend is someone who will support your cause and your preference, right? A foe is someone who will go against your cause and your preference. What the person said to Joshua is really something important for us to catch hold of and to understand. You see, we are creatures of habit and we have our own preference. Me too. I have that. Prior to the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, I can almost be 90% sure who I will see when I look at a certain area in the sanctuary. Why? Well, because we are creatures of habit and we have our own preference. We like to sit at a certain place. And week after week, we will sit at the same place because we are creatures of habit and we have our own preference. We have a certain way of doing things. And it is called my way. So in our minds, which include mine as well, I will think this way. Are you supporting my cause and preference or not? If you are not supporting my cause and preference, then you are not a friend. You are a foe, all right? But if you are supporting my cause and my preference, then you are a friend. Now, are you getting the picture? Do you see what is happening here in Joshua chapter 5, verse 13? Joshua was asking, are you a friend or a foe? To put it another way, Joshua was asking, are you for me or are you against me? Now, the answer that came back to Joshua was surprising to him. And certainly it is surprising to us as well. The person said, neither one. I am the commander of the Lord's army. You see, that means we need to begin to see things not from our own perspective, no matter how spiritual, how logical, and how right it may seem. And we need to begin to see things from God's perspective. We need to ask with our own preference laid down, Lord, what are you saying? Lord, what do you want us to do? And be prepared to hear what the Lord has to say. And in Joshua chapter 5, verse 14, he said, what do you want your servant to do? Because when you read on in the following chapter, the way to conquer Jericho is not conventional at all. If Joshua and the Israelites were to do their way, it would most likely be showing ahead, you know, and going ahead straight on to attack Jericho. But the Lord told them to be silent and to march around Jericho seven times for seven days before attacking. If they do it their way, they would not have conquered Jericho. But when they did it God's way, Jericho fell. So what it means is this, that we need to begin to see things not from our own perspective, no matter how spiritual, how logical, or how right it may seem. We need to begin to see things from God's perspective. So as we enter into this next slide together, I want to emphasize three things. New relationship. We need to really pause and ask the Lord, Lord, how is my relationship with you? And I encourage you in this coming week to just sit with the Lord, you know, sit with the Lord. Don't run around, uh, spend some time, five, 10 minutes in the morning or even at night, sit with the Lord and say, Lord, how is my relationship with you? And, and hear what the Lord has to say. He has got something to say to you. And as he 
say something to you, speak sincerely and honestly from your heart. The Lord is not looking for right answers. You need to hear that. The Lord is not looking for right answers. But the Lord is looking for answers that are sincere, answers that are honest. If you're struggling in your relationship with the Lord, just say it to the Lord. He loves you and he wants to renew the relationship with you. Secondly, new resources. The way that the Lord will provide for us in the days ahead can be different. So my encouragement to you is this, do not be fixated as to how the resources will come, you know, the methods. Uh, it was like that before and it's, it must be like this forever and ever. I, I think the Lord wants us to begin to understand methods can change. The way the resources can change, but it is still the Lord who provides. And so he's asking us, do not trust in the methods, do not trust in the ways, but trust in the one who provides. Okay. And then thirdly, new rules of engagement. We have all got preference of our own. And sometimes we, 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 we ask others to join us in our preference and we call them a friend if they do. And if they don't, we say you are full. But I, I think the Lord is really asking us as a church to lay down our own preference and to begin to sit with the Lord and ask the Lord, Lord, what do you want? What are you saying? And I, I pray that our posture will be like that of Joshua. You know, where he said to the Lord, what do you want your servant to do? So churches, I, and I, I do not have any specifics to give you, but three principles, which I hope to guide us in our new decade, for I know the things that is ahead of this will be very different. So as I end, let us pray. I'd like to encourage us to just uh, be quiet and pause. Whatever you're doing right now, I just want to invite you to pause and just come to the Lord just as you are. Thank you, Lord. Lord, as we come today celebrating our 11th anniversary, we recognize that indeed it is because of your grace and your mercy and your faithfulness, Lord, we have managed, Lord, to grow and to come around and to celebrate our 11th anniversary. So, Lord, we give you thanks and praise. Lord, as we move ahead, we pray, Lord, that you would help us to renew our relationships with you. And so, Lord, as a church, as we spend the next week or so sitting with you as an individual, as a family, as a ministry, as a group of leaders, Lord, we pray that you would speak to us. We pray, Lord, that you will help us to hear you clearly. And that, Lord, no matter what the relationship is at this point in time, we pray, Lord, that you uh, will help us not to run away, but to draw close to you. And that, Lord, as we move ahead in the days coming, Help us, O oh God, to not be fixated on the methods or the ways, but that, Lord, help us to trust in you and to lean on you and to know with certainty in our hearts and minds that you are the one who provides. And lastly, Lord, in the days ahead, we pray that you would teach us to lay down our own preferences and cause us, O oh God, to ask the question, Lord, what do you have to say to us? And help us to be attentive. 
So Lord, we thank you. We pray this and we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.